Hi. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Stefan Hastic, and I'm with uh, a distributed systems group from the Vienna University of Technology. Uh, and the purpose of today's talk is to, uh, well, briefly introduce uh, IoT cloud systems and uh, talk about some challenges uh, how to provision these systems. So, if we start from the infrastructure layer, the IoT cloud basically consists of a data center on one side, so the typical resources which we already used to as a processing, storage and networking as a service, and on the other side we have these uh, small uh, devices which are distributed all over the place, so basically uh, geographically distributed uh, infrastructure consisting of um, additional uh, resources such as gateways, sensors, actuators, and, um, and so forth. And uh, basically the IoT cloud combines both uh, of these uh, old, so to say, traditional uh, resources with uh, new types of resources such as IoT resources. And uh, our aim is uh, basically to abstract these IoT cloud resources and to expose them uh, um, in a unified manner. So what this basically means is to uh, enable people working with IoT Cloud, such as developers, operations managers, etc., to see these resources as, as one uh, unified uh, thing. So you don't really care anymore whether my thing is running on the cloud or it's running somewhere uh, far away from a data center or on some uh, gateway or if it's a uh, sensory uh, data stream uh, or yeah, anything. Basically, this should all be the this, it should be viewed uh, in the same uh, thing. And for this, obviously, we, sh we need uh, some new uh, abstractions. Uh, and uh, another important thing is then, uh, when we have this abstraction, we should uh, enable development and uh, typical development and operations processes uh, for IoT cloud applications. And these processes involve, uh, well, uh, you can argue always uh, typical software uh, engineering processes such as uh, development, provisioning, uh, runtime governance, uh, operations, uh, etc. However, yeah, due to the scale of the, the problem, uh, in this talk uh, I will only focus on how to provision these uh, IoT cloud uh, systems. And now I guess yeah, you have heard what IoT cloud is, and you're probably wondering, uh, well, why would anybody need to combine IoT with a cloud? Well, in our case, this came uh, from uh, an actual use case. So this is basically done um, in collaboration with a company uh, who uh, is uh, uh, responsible for a fleet vehicles uh, management, uh, so delivering a fleet vehicles management uh, system. So what this means, we have a, a fleet of small wheel electric vehicles such as a black car vehicles which you probably see every day around here, buzzing around us. Uh, and they are deployed um, yeah, worldwide uh, and there are many different types of them and uh, each one of them hosts a specific onboard gateway which provides access to internal sensors or potentially some of them uh, provide access to actuators to, to, uh, within this uh, vehicle. Uh, and uh, basically um, the whole um, business model involves different stakeholders. First of all we have manufacturer and they have a little bit of different business model so they don't really sell these vehicles to uh, end users such as uh, golf courses or, or hotel campuses like this one, but they lease them. So they actually want to be able to monitor and to know in what, uh, in what condition these vehicles are. Uh, and uh, therefore, so they are one of the, one of the stakeholders who are interested in these vehicles. Obviously then you have different channels and distributors who need to move these vehicles from the manufacturer to the end point and then in these environments you have different um, users who are also interested in uh, uh, different uh, at least information about these vehicles. So basically this system needs to provide a variety of services such as um, about vehicle uh, maintenance, about vehicle tracking such as the driving history of the vehicle, uh, whether it left the gear fence, uh, then different vehicle informations, and so forth. So this actually opened up a um, whole set of questions, 
and that is how to connect all these vehicles and to provide um, well, first, how to connect all these vehicles. That's, that's hard uh, on its own. Because you have to be able to talk to uh, these individual uh, uh, vehicles somehow. So you can think about having some hierarchical infrastructure or connecting it directly to, to some servers, etc. And uh, in this case, well, we obviously noticed, okay, cloud has one of the main features of the cloud is to provide high speed access uh, to, to its uh, services. So basically, it should be able to support a large number of simultaneous connections. So this is kind of a yeah, check for cloud. It, it, it should work. Uh, how to provide a global view on the fleet. So what this means basically that, uh, for example, this manufacturer has um, a sort of unified view on all the vehicles uh, all over the world. So you can imagine this logging into a single portal and then being able to know where your vehicles are and what their vehicle condition is. And again, uh, then this requires, uh, this opens a whole set of new questions, and that is uh, how to store the data produced by, the, uh, by these vehicles, and also how to process the data or different alarms coming from the vehicles. And obviously this uh, requires um, a lot of resources, uh, uh, both uh, computational resources and the storage resources. And I guess, uh, again, uh, in this regard, cloud is kind of a perfect match because well, we all know that uh, theoretically cloud uh, does provide unlimited amount of uh, these resources. So this is just shortly why do we need to connect the Internet of Things uh, with the cloud. And now um, I just want to kind of give a very high level overview of the approach, how we want to do that, and the course principles on which we rely in order to accomplish uh, these things. So basically, the, the general idea is to move from physically isolated, rigid IoT infrastructure, which is more or less typical for to, today's systems, in the sense that you have custom uh, task-specific uh, task solutions, uh, which, uh, so basically, they are specifically built for, one, uh, for solving one particular problem. And uh, what we want to do is actually move to a virtualized, elastic IoT cloud uh, by utilizing um, main principles of uh, software defined. Now, I, I don't want to go too deep into the, what the software defined is and what it does, but in essence, it basically promotes having uh, well-defined APIs and uh, um, enabling, uh, uh, basically enabling, defining uh, different um, capabilities uh, on the software layer rather in, inside the hardware layer. So this is an important aspect which you try, should try to keep in mind. Uh, and the other one is, the other principle is to move from these task-specific solutions to a fully-fledged uh, IoT cloud ecosystem, uh, which supports uh, all sorts of design and management processes which are based on a DevOps approach. And uh, I presume you all heard at least about DevOps, and I think the main important, uh, the most important um, part of the DevOps approach in, uh, regarding our work is uh, automation. So automation and very early automation due to uh, different problems uh, which I'll try to um, address in the next uh, two slides. Uh, so basically first uh, let's see what is, uh, is there any difference and what is the difference between a traditional cloud and a software defined uh, IoT cloud. So as, as we've seen, uh, they both have um, virtualization um, at its uh, foundation, but uh, unlike cloud, so traditional cloud computing, uh, there are additional resources in uh, IoT cloud. So as already stated, apart from having the compute, uh, storage, and network as a service, we also add uh, different things such as uh, field devices, sensors, uh, sensory streams, uh, etc. Uh, uh, so, yeah, that, that's one of the, the differences. The other one is that IoT Cloud is actually a geographically distributed uh, system in a sense that its infrastructure is not tied to a single data center anymore as in a, in a traditional cloud computing, but it consists of a, a very, very large amount of uh, smaller devices which are scattered, um, well, all over the globe uh, eventually. 
Um, and also, of course, uh, IoT Cloud kind of um, aims at uh, enabling a better resource uh, utilization, but um, not um, all traditional models uh, will be sufficient uh, in order to realize this. So, for example, we can have um, uh, self-service, for example, utility-oriented consumption, which is inherent to uh, typical traditional uh, cloud computing, but uh, other aspects need to be uh, really taken into account here because uh, this um, distributed infrastructure will probably not be owned by, um, let's say, a single stakeholder and then, of course, uh, privacy, ownership uh, and uh, also some legal issues come into mind which uh, so kind of make uh, the even harder, which draw even harder line between the traditional cloud uh, and the uh, IoT cloud. Uh, and, uh, well, yeah, as, as the purpose of the talk is to try to analyze some of the provisioning uh, aspects of uh, IoT cloud, I'll just try to, to identify, uh, well, two, I think, main challenges. In this case, is uh, how to manage configuration of IoT cloud systems. And this is a tough one because, as, as I said, we deal with the geographically distributed systems. So basically, uh, it's really not uh, it's, it's the traditional approaches of being, you know, uh, next to a device, fixing the cables, plugging into it manually. This this simply won't work because if you imagine you have a very large number of devices, I'm talking about now the thousands or even hundreds of thousands of devices which uh, you need to operate. You can't simply uh, well SSH into each one of them upload some policy, force policy, or even go to see why my gateway is currently not working. Uh, well, what this means is that um, we obviously need some sort of um, mechanism, and some sort of support to enable us to manage these configurations on a, such a um, large scale uh, with the geographical distribution and also, of course, uh, with this uh, plethora of uh, devices and the uh, platforms which are involved into the system. Uh, and another challenge is, of course, how to uh, enable expressing these com uh, complex relationships. What I mean by this is how to enable some, uh, how to deliver some high level functionality out of these low level resources and uh, capabilities which are scattered all over our data centers and our um, IoT infrastructure. And some of the problems of course arise because of uh, the diversity of stakeholders and diversity of their requirements, which I tried to elaborate a little bit with this uh, scenario slide. Uh, and what it boils down to is that, um, well first we have a different uh, different functionalities already available and already sitting out there. For example, like different uh, communication protocols. And some of them might be uh, like uh, MQTT, so message MQ telemetry transport, or it can be constraint application protocols like CoAP or SMAP. So there is really a large number of protocols, how you can, uh, communication protocols, how you can um, interact with these uh, devices. And uh, now depending uh, on a specific use case and the problem that you want to solve at this point, um, these need to be somehow customizable, combined, and basically um, put together to, de to um, deliver these uh, higher, uh, higher level uh, fun functionalities. Uh, and uh, so how we want to do this, is, so first part, how to abstract these resources and capabilities. We um, developed something which is called the software defined IoT units. And that's basically a conceptual model which um, is responsible to abstract, so provide abstractions for um, IoT cloud resources and capabilities. And they are as well main building blocks of our software defined uh, IoT cloud systems. Uh, and now concerning the provisioning uh, problems, uh, we identified actually many mechanisms which are required to support provisioning in this case, but I think the two most interesting uh, ones would be then uh, these managed configuration models. So how to enable management of uh, large scale uh, systems like this, and also how to, uh, to uh, automatically compose these IoT units 
in order to provide a higher level functionality. So in the, next, in the yeah, rest of the presentation, I'll try to, to elaborate on these things a little bit more. And so yeah, uh, here you can see a high level um, concept, conceptual model of our software defined IoT units. And uh, well, as, as, as you already see from this uh, figure up there, the API plays a very important role. So what we aim at is to provide some sort of a, a standard API, how to interact with these resources and capabilities in a unified manner, so you actually can start thinking about these things as, as, as uh, some API um, functions instead of actually thinking whether is this a device or is this a, is this a sensor, is this an actuator, should I consider this to be a data stream uh, and so forth. And so basically one of the main uh, and the most important thing is that our software defined uh, units, uh, IoT units provide a well defined uh, API. And uh, also based on this API, they support fine grain internal configurations. So this can be, uh, for example, adding, as you can see uh, in, a, in the top part of, the, of this box, um, different dependency units, uh, laid down uh, mechanisms, they can have a utility uh, cost function, so basically to determine how much should I, should I charge for anyone uh, using my resource. Um, and uh, yeah other things which can be basically put into these units in order to, to provide some, uh, some uh, high uh, level functionality. And now, I think, okay, yeah, okay. So we provide a different, um, we, we kind of identified a classification of, of these units in order to enable people to kind of bring some semantics into the whole thing and enable people to think uh, easier uh, with our concepts. And we identified, first of all, these atomic units. And these atomic units uh, represent the finest grain IoT cloud resources. For example, as we, as we already uh, said, uh, like MQTT or Co-op uh, Protocol client would be uh, one, of, one of the examples of these uh, atomic units. And uh, then these atomic units can be kind of composed together in order to create uh, complex or uh, higher level uh, units. And basically, to support this composition, uh, we provide uh, unit uh, prototypes. And I think it's easy to think about these unit prototypes. It's kind of a fancy name for a container, which uh, can be used to provide a different type of virtualization. For example, it can be VM-based, it can be Linux container-based, it can be based on an OSGI or even on IOC, so a version of control container in order to enable this runtime composition of these atomic units into something which actually makes some sense uh, and provides some high level functionality. So here, yeah, yeah I have just tried to depict this and uh, to make this look nice, so let's see if I succeed. So this is our container, for example. And um, let's, see, let's assume it's based on, for example, it's an IOC container based on Spring and uh, somebody wants to add a sensor to it. So basically what you need to do is uh, you, you need to uh, provide the, uh, this, of course, of course, the code for the sensor and then this sensor needs to implement uh, some, some API which we provide and uh, also then let's assume that a stakeholder also wants to add, some user wants to add a communication client in order to enable um, other parts of application to communicate with this sensor through through this uh, communication protocol such as uh, MQTT. Um, and then uh, what um, what the, the developer or whoever operations manager needs to specify is configuration. And in this configuration, well, let's assume that it's the simplest possible form of configuration in a sense it's just a policy which tells, uh, okay, this sensor should talk to uh, this uh, client. And basically, uh, our runtime container takes, uh, reads this configuration and binds these two together uh, during, the, during the deployment time or even the runtime. And then, of course, you can uh, also add different things uh, to, these, uh, to this container, such as a cost function, which again um, needs to implement an API, for example, in order to monitor the, the number of uh, messages in a message queue, so it can derive how many uh, data instances it, it sent uh, to the outside world. 
And uh, basically when you do this, these components will also then uh, provide uh, the API to the outside world and we call this uh, API software defined uh, API. And uh, by doing these things, uh, you just uh, combine the first software defined IoT gateway based, uh, based on our uh, principles. So I hope this helped a little bit just to see how, the, how we can actually take these lower level units put them in a container, provide some configuration in order for them to, to seamlessly work together and then they also expose some uh, API to the outside world and then again you can of course continue doing the same thing in order to get some higher level uh, functionality. Um, okay, so back to our two interesting challenges, uh, mechanisms, um, uh, which first of all uh, it's a managed uh, configurations um, and uh, basically what we do, we treat these configurations in the same manner as any other atomic, uh, any other software defined IoT units. So this means basically that um, every configuration uh, which you want to impose on a system, you can uh, develop centrally and then give it to, to the framework which then pushes these configurations automatically to all of the end devices and uh, basically performs, uh, enforces, let's say that these are some policies, enforces these policies automatically. And this is basically based on the, on, on the concept of uh, late uh, runtime binding which means basically that uh, whenever a new uh, policy arrives the, all the mechanisms which are contained within this, um, for example, in our gateway, will, will be the, their dependencies will be reevaluated and then possibly even changed uh, during uh, during the runtime. Uh, and then in this case, of course, the idempotence um, of our configuration files um, plays a crucial role because. Um, uh, for example, if, if uh, during the execution of, of one of these uh, configuration files something happens and it fails, then you will have a gateway or any device which is basically in unstable form, meaning that you executed a part of it and then it failed. So what you want to do, you want to re-execute this again in order to make it converge into some uh, target, uh, target state, uh, state uh, which you actually uh, desire. Um, and there are many tools, as, as we will see, and uh, uh, frameworks which can be used to at least partly provide um, some of these, some of these um, requirements. Uh, and then uh, another part is uh, basically automated composition, and that's the more or less the thing which, which we see with, with this gateway. And basically this means that uh, you simply uh, want to tell the framework what kind of uh, topology, let's say, you require. And then the framework uh, is responsible to enforce all of these um, maybe configuration directives or dependencies onto the devices and basically uh, compose them uh, automatically. And um, uh, this is important because uh, if you want to deliver these uh, high-level uh, uh, functionalities or to, to make any complex systems uh, with in, in such a complex, uh, large scale, it's, it's really not uh, possible to take each of these individual gateways and connect them manually to each other. So you really want to have some sort of automated way how to add these resources, how to combine different capabilities with each other and basically for this uh, you need some sort of framework support and you need some sort of uh, automation uh, tools, uh, etc. And uh, now this is, uh, this is um, well, more or less high level overview of uh, provisioning uh, process or provisioning phases and in the first part basically um, what we usually do in the first part is we try to select the unit prototype. So we try to select uh, some sort of uh, container which will be a base uh, to combine our units. 
And in this case, there are things, uh, there are many uh, virtualization techniques which can be used here, but I think we all heard of the Docker, which is based on, uh, on uh, Linux containers, and the different, of course, uh, platforms to manage uh, VM-based uh, uh, virtualization. Then in the second phase, we basically uh, try to compose these atomic units, as you've already seen uh, in our gateway example. And in this phase, uh, there are also uh, different tools, mostly configuration management tools, such as uh, from the Bosch from Cloud Foundry, Puppet from Puppet Labs, or Chef from Opscode, which enable this centralized management of the configurations and basically, um, well, to some extent also provide uh, propagating these decisions to, uh, within a distributed system. And uh, there are things which need to be adapted and fixed, uh, tweaked, <laughs> and, um, to, to enable this to work in a very large uh, scale of systems and especially with uh, uh, such a large number of different platforms uh, such as uh, in our IoT cloud. And then uh, also we can then take these um, composed units and basically combine them into uh, topologies. And this is what's mostly done in the, in the last phase of the provisioning. And for this um, we can rely again on, uh, I mean there are different technologies which we can benefit uh, in this phase, such as uh, CloudFormation, OpenStack Heat uh, or uh, even Tosca which basically can enable uh, combining these things, describing these topologies and com uh, creating these uh, complex uh, units. And now I will go to a demo. And in this demo, what we use is basically VM-based virtualization with the chef, Opscope chef, and Tosca uh, as, as a technologies. Uh, and basically this demo is about provisioning a vehicle tracking application with our software-defined uh, IoT units. And let's see if this works. Okay. Yeah, it works. So yeah, I'll just need to try to keep this uh, short as possible now. Uh, and basically, okay, what we do here is um, we use a tool which is called uh, Salsa and basically that's uh, uh, that's um, implementation of Tosca, our own implementation of Tosca, well not really one-on-one -on -one Tosca, there are some bits and pieces changed here and there to, to suit our needs better, but the, the majority is, is, uh, is based on Tosca. And basically what uh, this tool does, it enables us to specify um, uh, complex uh, complex systems and the different topologies. So basically, what we do right now, we are going, we are taking a top-down approach in a sense that we are going from from a high level. First, we try to combine these uh, topologies, and then we will focus on individual units and configure them uh, individually. And this is basically how the just a more or less simple simple topology consisting of one. Um, of uh, four instances of virtual machines. In this case, uh, these two uh, represent uh, different vehicles, different sensors. The top one, I think, is the uh, MQ uh, broker, in this case, to support uh, the, the MQTT protocol. And the last one represents our uh, application, basically, which runs, uh, which will show some, pr some presentation layer, in a sense, uh, which will just be, which will use as a, as a user interface. And okay, these are some, some, some things which uh, you can do with this tool. But I think the most important part here is um, that uh, we, how we can use uh, Tosca to describe these things. And basically, uh, that uh, the, the system automatically deploys uh, these components. And what you can see here is that these uh, our two sensors need to communicate with the broker, which then uh, also, and also our application needs to uh, connect to the same broker in order to read this. Uh, information. Uh, so now uh, I want to show you how actually we can uh, utilize uh, Opscode Chef um, to, uh, to provision uh, these individual uh, units. And for that we actually provide a repository or of, 
of our atomic uh, software defined units, which can be added uh, to to combine uh, to create more complex uh, units. And here, I think we have um, yeah, that just uh, basically our uh, application and then also the client and then there are other units representing sensors. And the, yeah, the important thing to note here is that the, all of these um, components or these units implement our software-defined API, which will eventually enable this seamless composition of them, in this case, within a virtual machine. Uh, and how is this done? It's actually very simple. I mean, it looks very simple, and uh, it requires basically these different chef recipes. And what uh, I'm doing here is just adding these different capabilities to a specific uh, container, in this case a virtual machine. And it's, it's actually yeah, just basically drag and drop, and then uh, when we save the list, this is where the magic happens, in a sense that this is done centrally, as we see. And then basically this configuration is pushed to all of the devices with the same role. So for example, if we say that uh, the, these, all of these units are sensors, or all of these units are gateways, uh, and we just do this once, basically. And even if we have a, a 500 gateway sitting out there, the same configuration model will be pushed towards the edge of the infrastructure and simultaneously applied to all of the all of the nodes uh, residing uh, outside the the system. And basically, yeah, this is what's happening. I'm just configuring the other nodes. Etc. But I think that the main point is just to see how this can be used in order to propagate, to perform and propagate these configuration models to different uh, units. And the last part, uh, because I think I'm running a bit late, I'm just quickly going to show you how the um, try to show you how the application looks like. Basically. Um, this is a video, it's not live anymore, so should work. Yeah. And yeah, this is the end result basically. Um, and yeah, when you click here, then the application connects to the uh, to our virtual gateways and reads the, the input information from the vehicles and then simply just displays it on a, on a on Google Maps. Yeah, that's it. With some guy randomly driving in Vietnam. And uh, the, to conclude, well, yeah, we presented these, um, this concept uh, of software defined IoT units, which is used to abstract IoT cloud resources in a unified manner. And it uh, enables us, uh, it enables a fine grain delivery and consumption of IoT cloud resources. And capabilities um, basically simplifies provisioning and deploying these uh, complex software-defined uh, IoT systems, and um, yeah, flexible customization of the units that that we all hopefully now realize and so. On. And I think the most important part here is that the, these two kind of uh, aspects, which is automation and managed configuration basically which uh, are the key ingredients to enable provisioning of uh, large-scale uh, software defined IoT systems. And thank you, and now I'm open for the questions. So, time for question. That's the one thing for the presentation. Uh, I'd like to ask you nothing about the provisioning APIs you mentioned in the beginning allowing uh, different resources communicating and it's sort of uh, unifying right, the use of all the different resources so are you defining the APIs yourself or are you using uh, a standard API how do you make sure that uh, this abstract API maps or talks to the complete API that is a cloud resource uh, complete cloud resource expect to uh, okay, yeah, that's a very good question. Uh, just, uh, do you mean by standard API in the sense of, uh, let's say, Nova, or standard API in the sense of a REST or soul based API? Is it uh, from a technical perspective or from a semantic perspective, the question? Uh, both, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Uh, okay. Maybe you can see the semantics. Uh, the semantics. I think it's easier to answer because the yeah, technical details are not that important. 
Well, yeah, that's actually that's that's a very good question because uh, this. Um, um, the whole thing is derived from a use case. So currently what we do, we are trying to identify things which are at the moment useful for us. And I don't believe it's even feasible to attempt to define the whole uh, software-defined API just by thinking about it and trying to design it from uh, the head. But I think what plays the crucial role here is to kind of um, put this uh, out there gives some propositions, some lessons learned, which was very useful for us, and also other people, which then can take the same approach, basically, and try to combine and abstract their uh, processes, their capabilities, their resources, in a sense uh, that is needed for them. And in this case, then, uh, we can have the whole complete set of these uh, APIs, and then hopefully one day uh, also have a complete ecosystem, which will uh, provide the life cycle management distribution, versioning, etc. about the CPIs. Hope this answers the question. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. Just before a question, yeah, I think one thing important in the IoT is uh, the domain and stack folder. So you can think like for example, air conditioning manufacturer, you know, they can have a lot of IoT with different implementation, but they can come up with you know, some sort of agreement on a set of API or something. Any other question? Okay, so uh, thanks Stefan, and I think we close the session this morning and see you again at 3 p.m. for some other talk. Thank you very much. Thank you.